Hello. Good to see you again. How are you? How's Toronto? Toronto's fabulous, Cold. but freezing. Freezing. It's global warming. What can I tell you? You know what though? But the, there's less snow though. There's less snow, which I'm happy about. Oh my God, I love it. I love it. It's England's not... frozen. It's below zero. <laughs> Europe's frozen. Prague is frozen. And we're just going. Yeah, that's the answer Global for everything, warming. isn't it? At there least it's go. not apocalyptic. Yeah, we got to we got to paint all the roofs of our houses white. <laughs> <laughs> is that the solution? Insanity. I hear it this is insanity. insanity. Um, Gary, another fantastic performance in this. And uh, <laughs> I just want to ask you, first of all, what was your initial reaction to this story when you got it? Well, I thought it was um, kind of like a western. That's what it reminded me of. Um, uh, you know, the guy, the sheriff, or the mayor, or the whatever, the town, and the kind, you know, and the, the, the drifter that comes through, and they have this clash and confrontation, and then he goes off and he gets a posse, you know what I mean? It was all that, it had all of that, and I'd never really, um, never really done anything like that. Um, and the Hughes brothers, that was interesting, mm. that, to see them, sort of their reemergence. Um, um, and uh, I liked American Pimp. Am I allowed to say that? I love their, I like their work. It's often when I say I liked American Pimp, people always kind of raise their eyebrows and go, but I just thought it was just wonderful study. Yeah. Um, so I've loved their work, really, since Menace to Society. Loved Denzel, a big fan. Mm -hmm. So it was all great cocktail of stuff, you know what I yeah, mean? It yeah. was quite delicious. With Carnegie, um, when did you develop him yourself? Did you, you get a script and you know kind of who this guy is, but did you go back to the Hughes brothers and say, look, you know what, maybe I want to play him this way. How much did you develop him? Um, well, I, I, I uh, there was no real description of him. Um, and I said to Alan, I said, look, you know, you've got all these guys and everybody's post-apocalyptic and there's, you know, everybody's filthy and everybody's dirty and they've got beards and they've got long hair and they've got all this stuff. And I said, look, I'm the guy with the water and the soap. And I run the place. So um, I think I should be clean shaven. Um, and uh, so that was initially the kind of look that that we want that we went with and, and but they were very they kind of really open to ideas yeah. even in the even in the style of clothes and from early costume fittings and things like that they're very that goes back to the pimp look I thought <laughs> but there but it's great where you 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 know you feel that you got you've either got a, you have a set that you the sets that you work on and then there's sets that you really create on mm -hmm. And they were very, very open. Even, even occasionally, uh, it's rare, but I, on this I shot a scene and then thought about it and then wanted to reshoot it because I had a different kind of take on it. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they were absolutely open to it and allowed me to do it, which is rare. Yeah. Um, in a film like this, when you're working with uh, Den Denzel Washington, his character, I mean, obviously you two are at odds. Is it important not to have rehearsal or, or, or have rehearsal because you, the way the characters work in this film? We had some rehearsal together, but it was more, not, not so much, it, just talking stuff out, you know. Um, you know, sometimes you can sit around and, and, and tell anecdotes and laugh and drink coffee and not even touch the script not even go anywhere near it, and yet you are working on the script, yet you are working, you are rehearsing. So we met a few times and um, talked a little bit about the characters, but I, get the I got the feeling that I like maybe more rehearsal than Denzel, mm -hmm. but I was happy to just kind of fly with it, just go with it. He, he went, you know, we'd, we'd, start, we'd get somewhere and he'd go, no, 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 okay, okay let's, let's not, Let's not overcook it. Let's save something and let's, 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 or that's a good idea. Let's do that when the cameras are rolling. Mm -hmm. What was your impression of watching him work in this film? 
Um, well, you have to really uh, uh, admire the uh, the um, the commitment to the work because I, he's not. I'm not. We're not twenty. We're not. A, you know. I'm not. T you know. Toby Maguire. You know. You I, were in Spider Man. No, no, no. But oh, I'm okay. saying. You know. He's. He just strikes me as someone with such kind of. Yeah. Full of, you know, he's got energy and he's got this thing. You know, when you, you get older, you know, you and and to see Denzel's commitment to the physicality of the role, and he went for a training and he had to do six months of all that kung fu and working on all that choreography. I mean, that's it, it's admirable to watch. Yeah, crazy to, to watch someone sort of do that for. Uh, uh, that, not that he's old, but at that age, for a part, you know what I mean? Yeah. I got he's tired not, watching him. Yeah, because he's not a kid anymore. And of course, then they had this wonderful sort of notion to sort of, which I thought was very impressive, is not to make it cuddy, but to see these fights almost mm -hmm. in their entirety in a wide shot. Mm -hmm. So it was, he would literally have to sort of m m learn all those moves like a dance. So I was very, I was very impressed with his commitment to the work. Heavy duty, you know, lot, lots of things going on in this film. But after working on it, did, does it, did it make you think a little bit about what we take for granted in life? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, air conditioning, yeah, the refrigeration, food, heat, the whole, yeah. It does make you, you, th you mean you flick the switch and you get light and it's, uh, yeah. you know, and it's... And kids, we all spot. I mean, we are. We live in a world that's now. Even I think I look at my kids, and it's just, you know, now it's, uh, it's, it's a crazy, crazy, crazy world that we it live really in. Right so, now. did it make the working conditions any any better? I mean, that dust and everything that you guys oh, had to live through. Yeah, no, that yeah. I mean, it helps. It helps. Yeah, when you're out there, you know, um, it really adds to the, you know. But it's always nice at the end of the day to get in that car, go back to the hotel and shower. You know, that's... That's the best thing. That's the treat, yeah. yeah. Now, I understand from everybody that you were the levity on set. You are a jokester. I don't, I don't know if a lot of people know that about you. Probably not. No. Why do you keep that under the radar? Because people always say to me, why are you always the bad guy? Why do you always play the villain? And then they think that that's what you're like in real life, I guess. Scary Gary. But I'm not. <laughs> you're a great actor. And I hope, I hope there's a big, giant Harry Potter reunion. Has there been talk about that now in, that it's wrapping up, that all of you guys get together for a big party? You know what? I hope that there's a party. And that is, um, and that has got to be. Excuse me, you can beat me out, but that's got to be one fuck off party, isn't it? They've really got to put their hand in their wallet and spend some money on that party. I so agree. But, yeah, that would be awesome. Always great to talk to you. All Thank right. you so much. You're Thank great you. In the film.